Hi guys, today I'm joined by Dr. Ify, who is the founder of Until I Digest Limited. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you, Christian. So, Dr. Ify, my first question is, your civil engineering research background is in water, wastewater, and waste to buy resources, right? Yes, um, that's the experience I've had, but my PhD research was actually in using artificial intelligence and omics analysis to optimize anaerobic processes. Mm -hmm. So my next question is, how does food waste fall into your research area? That's a very interesting question. So um, food waste is part of what we generate um, when we eat food. So is it that we have the food um, consumed or if the food goes beyond the expiry date, it can become food waste. And also food waste, and that is called um, what we call edible food that has uh, we have allowed to go to waste. And we have what we call inedible food, um, which also forms part of food waste, which means that those things are like your banana peels, your potato peels, which are inevitable, so that those are inedible food waste. So for us um, at Intel Digest, we try to help businesses to solve the problem of both the edible and inedible food waste. And um, in terms of how that relates to my research, for me, I love nature. I'm passionate about solving environmental and environmental challenges using um, engineering solutions. So food waste is one of those environmental problems that we have. Over one third of the food grown globally is actually wasted, which is massive, about 1.3 billion tons. And if that is allowed to end up in landfill, it will generate over 3.3 gigatons of carbon dioxide equivalent into the atmosphere, causing a lot of climate change. So for me, it is how I could use my engineering skill to provide a solution to solve such a big problem and avoid such an impact on our climate. Mm -hmm. Well, that's great that you're able to use your engineering skills, like you said, to be able to prevent and help decrease the amount of food waste that is affecting the environment in a bad way. And um, if we don't take action or if we stop helping with um, food waste, what are some um, situations that can happen? There'll be a massive um, impact if we don't address the challenge of food waste. And that is why United Nations have set a target by 2030, we need to half the amount of food that we waste. And also in the United Kingdom, there's been a target to stop any food waste going to landfill or sewer because there's a huge environmental impact, which, which I've mentioned about in terms of the carbon emission. Apart from that, there's a huge social impact with food waste because over 800 million people are going hungry in the world. And then we're wasting so much food, over 1.3 billion tons. What, like I explained before, some of these are edible, some of these are inedible. So it's how we can minimize the edible food that goes to waste so that we can reduce our impact on food waste. But at the same time, we need to maximize value from the inedible food waste so we can convert them to useful bioresources because we expect to have about 10 billion people in the world by 2050 and we need to feed them. And if we need to feed them, then we just have to manage our resources more efficiently. So there's an urgent need for us to do that. And more importantly also, there's an economic need to do that because when we lose food, we also lose money. So um, out of the food we waste globally at the moment, it costs over $1.3 trillion. That's mm -hmm. a huge amount of money we're losing from food waste. So it's how we can make maximized value from this food um, so that we don't waste so much and whatever we that is kind of um, inevitable, we can actually turn it into more useful uh, resources. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of problems that you're trying to solve right now. Um, so can you give me some examples besides global warming when the food waste actually um, affects the environment in a negative way? And also, uh, what does the large percent of food waste go to after it's discarded? 
Oh, that's a very interesting question. So in terms of the environmental impact, most of the environmental impact has to do with the carbon emission. And also, at times, people macerate food waste and send it down the drain. When it goes down the drain, it causes what we call the fat bags. Those fat bags clog up the the pipes, meaning that the wastewater treatment people need to clean up the pipe again so that the wastewater coming from my toilets and our showers can go to where it could be treated. It could be quite a big challenge to be able to do that. So that's one of the other environmental impact of, you know, wasting food. And also, it's also not really economically viable to keep wasting food. So apart from the environmental impact, it's also not economically viable. Um, and then the next question you asked me, do you want to repeat that again? Um, no, that's fine. Um, also, um, within this topic, um, food waste, how it affects the economy in a certain way, what can we use the money that can be prevented from being wasted if we actually do stop the food waste? So, um. That's a very interesting question too. If we um, stop food waste, then we could actually turn that money into growing better food for people to eat. And then we will also reduce the rate at which we use our land. So um, growing crops has a lot of um, impact on the land. So it, it causes a lot of land degradation. So if we don't waste food, we have enough resources. And then we also don't have to degrade our lands um, in terms of trying to use it for agricultural purposes. And also, um, also growing food uses a lot of water. So um, we're having a lot of water scarcity at the moment. So if we don't waste food, that means we don't have all those water wasted for growing those crops that we end up wasting. So I think it's very critical for us to understand the whole dynamics about food and the food supply chain. So even the food, when it's produced in the farm, it needs to be stored. It needs preserved. So we use energy to preserve this. We use energy to transport it from the farm to um, the retailing center. We use packaging to package the food. So there's a lot of things that go into the food um, from farm to fresh. So each time we waste food, all the energy we use in all these processes is completely wasted. All the water consumption, all the land um, that we've used to grow the crops has been stressed um, for no useful value. So um, I think it's really critical that we don't waste food so that we maximize these um, natural resources that we have and make you know the best use of them. Then coming to the other question that you asked me about what other things do we do with food waste at the moment, I think one of the things that happens is that we have what we call large-scale anaerobic digesters where this food is being put into and um, converted to gas or biogas so the challenge with that is that when you store food imagine if you have a food caddy at home you get the smell from your food caddy it means that the food waste is actually deteriorating so it means that for you to store food and then transport it one um it causes carbon emission for the transportation it also um make it, it results in a lot of loss of the yeah. nutrients in the food waste. So uh, it's very important, if possible, to be able to treat the food waste on site so that we can maximize value from it. So, you know, it's, it's an option, you know, that is viable, but in the long run, it has also some other impacts. And having done a lot of research in terms of handling food waste, collecting food waste from different, um, hospitality sector and then working with it in the lab, I can tell you for sure that it has also a human effect in terms of it has a lot of order, it's not very um it's it's not very human um positive and supportive for people to be doing such a work in terms of collecting food waste because it's really putrid, it's really smelly. Um, so if there are solutions that could help to actually help the use of such a method of treatment, uh, especially having to treat the food with on site, maximize value from it at the earliest possible time so we don't need to store it and then transport it for, for that treatment. That would be better. Yeah, you're right. 
And so you're talking about these solutions. Can you just expand a little bit more on some specific solutions that are coming directly from the problems? Like, is it mostly the the human error that we're wasting too much food or is it that we're um, farming too much crops and wasting the resources? Yeah, um, it could have been great if it, um, if it had been like we farming too many crops, then it could have been quite easier to manage because then we'll stop farming so many crops. But um, I don't think it's from that perspective. I think it's just um, mostly um, the fact that, as I explained before, some food waste are edible and some food waste are inedible in the sense that you couldn't have been eaten in the first place. So if we separate both of them, it's more on working on those edible ones stopping for us to stop wasting those edible ones and how those you know how how do we get those edible food wasted we as human you know we have our own role to play in terms of how we do all these things how we waste food and also it's about thinking of how can technology actually enable us to stop wasting all those kind of edible food so we can turn to useful resources yeah Thank you for your um, perspective on this topic and your insight. And today I was joined by Dr. Ify, the who is the founder of Intelli Digest Limited. Thank you very Thank much, you. Um, Christian. I really appreciate it. Cheers.